And now warming up is the winningest of them all in professional bowler association titles, the 31 Earl Anthony. Warming up in this final game, he was a tournament leader by 598 pins, and uh, regardless of where he finishes today, first or second, he will take the lead in money earned here in 1979. Chris, two things. Earl Anthony led by the second largest amount ever on a professional bowling tournament. He led by over almost 600 pins. The record is held by Jeff Mattingly. He did that in Tucson last summer. And one other thing, Earl is still practicing. A lot of people here think he's, he's bowling. The tournament leader gets six practice balls. The challenger, Joe Berardi, gets zero. So they're all set. U.S. Open title online. Also, Firestone for Berardi. 32,000. 21 to the winner, 11 to the loser. Berardi, who has just gained the victory over Pete Couture, who had won two prior matches. Berardi, 213. Couture, 199. All but the seven. The U.S. Open title on the line. Look out. Ooh. So confident, Chris. Here's the ideal style, but we've seen it so many times. But you know, Earl said something to me last week. We had 30 titles up to last week. He said he had lost a little confidence, and last week's win, number 31, helped him regain his confidence. Look at that just beautiful position. Look at that knee bend, foot perpendicular to the foul line, steady follow through. So confident, even among the great pros. That's great. That's so important. Leaving a six pin, 40 year old Earl Anthony, who's been a PBA member 11 years. And uh, the crew cut, <laughs> Earl Anthony. 1970, uh, Earl's been a member 11 years, but he didn't participate on the tour until full time until 1970. It's quite a record he's amassed over the last eight years. Seventh appearance on our telecast this year. So for Anthony, it's a strike and a spare this final match. Live coverage from the Bradley Bowl in Windsor Locks, Connecticut. Now Berardi with a spare up shooting in the second frame. Joe Berardi, we always thought he'd be a great star in the tour when he came out. He's 18, hasn't produced until this year, and he's really bowling well, and I asked him, what is the difference? Well, Bo, the reason I feel I'm bowling better this year is uh, because I think my, I'm bearing down a lot more. I'm trying to make good shots. I'm trying, when I get into the finals, I'm not looking back. I'm just trying to make my best shots and work real hard. All right, a chance to double right here. Earl Anthony trailing by 10. Leaving a seven. Two things to watch, his shoulder and his arm position, how it doesn't waver laterally at the top of the swing. That brings it back. Now he'll come back along that exact same line. See right there? Now watch, it won't go left or right. It'll go right back straight through. Just a little reline and straight through. Player of the year, three straight times. But as the scoreboard shows, Joe Berardi, 11 ahead. <laughs> Near perfection. Earl Anthony and Joe Berardi in our final match. Joe disturbed a little bit. Somebody moved on a chair. It's dead silence in this bowling lane. You could hear a pin drop or a chair move. Good move by Joe. Just back off the approach. Shows a lot of maturity right there. Oh, that's a three bagger. Ferrari's mother and father. I've ate pasta over at their house many a time. Dad, the co-owner of the 
little shot with Joy. Really loved that four bagger, and boy, that puts pressure now on Earl Anthony, who has a strike up. He'll be shooting in the fifth frame. Earl, who just recently signed as the pro up at Sports World Center in Kent, Washington, has his back to the wall. 31 pins, and it's only halfway through the game. And again, a seven. Chris, you'd think that a guy who won a tournament last week would use the same ball again this week, but Earl struggled earlier in this tournament and drilled five new bowling balls, and I asked him why. My problem is the ball, once it gets a track in it, it wants to hook early on me, and I don't like to throw the ball real hard. I like to control the speed, get the ball to react to where I want it to on the lane. And uh, by using a new surface, I get the ball farther down the lane, get it to ro roll on the back end rather than roll early. And uh, the, the commission we're bowling on here is Tennessee to roll early, so it helped me this week by having five new balls. Dancing pins giving Anthony a strike in the sixth. Here's the angle of Earl Anthony right down approximately the second arrow from the left channel and a perfect hit. Watch the four take out the seven. Nice and neat. Notice how Earl just keeps that pins in play. He doesn't blast them off there as like the Joe Berardi. Keeps them nice and low with just enough. You don't need to overpower them. An event formerly called the All-Star won four times by Dick Weber and Don Carter. Berardi looking for his first win has put five. Wow. If he hits this one in there, there's not much Earl can do. He'll have to go to the wall. Oh, he is really finding the pocket. Earl, every frame is a must strike situation. Four frames left, his back to the wall, trails by 51. Strike working. Earl Anthony is not out, but he's definitely down. First bad shot he's throwing the whole match. Walks back a little disconsolate, <laughs> to say the least. But he wants to win this one. Best he can shoot now is a 229 game. 119 for the sets of despair. Seventh appearance on our telecast this year. And uh, it's a First player this year to be the top seeded bowler going into the telecast in four tournaments. He's only has one win to show from that though, Chris. It's a tough spot. Definitely is. You either have it or you don't. Today, Earl is struggling. <laughs> Strike in the eighth. And and Berardi up with six in a row, shooting in the eighth frame final game. We're already asking for another re-rack. Apparently he sees something wrong with his right-hand lane, but the way he's scoring is not many problems. If he throws a strike on this ball, Chris, it's just lights out. He will be in the Firestone. Couture will be out. There's Debbie. It's not over yet. No, four, six, and ten. Joe Berardi leaving the four, six, ten has possibly opened the door. The situation becomes this. Berardi will just go for the count or the wood, the six, ten. But he needs to mark in the ninth and tenth frame to shut out Earl Anthony. It's not over. Here's Berardi's situation with that open frame. Two eight frames. He has 195 working at a 235 pace. All he needs is spares in the ninth and 10th to shut out Earl. The best Earl can do is 229, but it's not over. He's on the left lane. Wow, good break. Just broke up the 4-6 again. Could not seem to close the door on Earl. But the situation is still this. If he makes a spare and marks in the 10th, he will win. Earl Anthony must strike out, though, to have any chance. All right.
right, there's the spare in the ninth for Joe Berardi, who defeated Pete Couture in the previous game, 213 to 199, to get here against the tournament leader, Anthony, with strike in the eighth, shooting in the ninth. If Earl does not strike on this ball, Joe Berardi is the new U.S. Open champion. Earl must strike on this ball, the 10th and the 11th, to have any chance. situation becomes this. Earl with a strike in the 10th and 11th. Two more strikes forces Joe Berardi to mark. If Earl fails to strike on either one of these balls, it's all over again. 31 titles. in this final game. It's all over. Couture's out of the Firestone. Berardi's in. What a way to go. 21,000, the smile on his face, and a major title. And Earl, of course, now going for the 3-5 on the left lane. Chops the 5 off the 3, and would you believe a 195 has happened so often to the tournament leader waiting in the wings, Joe Berardi. First victory and coming in one of the major championships of all of bowling as Dick Richards, the president of the BPAA, and Chief Wapinski, the executive director of the BPAA. They're in the blue coats looking, and now Debbie Berardi uh, with a tear in her eye. Tears of happiness. Berardi just finishing up. What a way to go. What a fun frame that is. Little tears coming to Joe's eye. What a nice young man, and look at him appreciate it. There's a, a cry of victory. You can wait a lifetime and never experience that. What a great feeling that is. Well, Nelson, uh, you were the gracious, uh, dignified, defending United States Open champion, and now it's Berardi. So we'll be talking with this 24-year-old who shot a 232 to Earl Anthony's 195 is the Open champion. Earl bowled great all week, and it's just that sometimes enviable position, but uh, this time it wasn't so enviable. So uh, maybe next time Earl will win. I heard you make a comment a moment ago on our, uh, down at the end of the lanes, they have uh, banners of uh, winners, and that, your banner being up, you said meant as much to you as the 21,000. Well, yeah, it, a title means so much, and... This is a great one to win, and I'd like to thank everybody from the BPAA and just thank them so much for having a tournament so nice and now especially so wonderful as this. Well, they'd like to thank you as we bring in the president of the Bowling Proprietors Association of America, our friend from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Dick Richards. Dick? Thank you, Chris. My congratulations, Joe. And on behalf of the Bowling Proprietors Association, I'd like to give you this check of $21,000. <laughs> and really, I, I've got to say for 4,000 bowling proprietors, we're extremely proud to have you as our champion. Thank you so much. You. Now let's bring in Debbie Berardi. Come here, Debbie. Thank you, Dick. Oh, I can't believe it. Finally. Now, one final uh, little touch of defending champion was our colleague Nelson Burton, Jr., who is now for 12 months known what the U.S. Open title means, just as Jack Nicklaus knows in golf, Byron Nelson, and all the other greats. Come here, Bob. Well, thank you, Chris. I'd like to uh, really congratulate Joe. He's a great young player. When I was 18 years, when he was 18 years old, 18 a long time ago for me, he went with me to uh, bowl in a cancer fund term. And down, when he didn't have any money or anything, he donated his time. And I knew this was a great young man. And uh, I know the thrill of winning the U.S. Open is one of the, the really great tournaments in the game of bowling. And it couldn't have happened to a nicer young guy. He's starting right at the top. The next title is just a little easier. Congratulations. Thank you, Bo, very much. And Joe, I know that you're a great product of junior bowling. Oh, yeah. I started off in junior bowling and uh, eventually worked my way up to the tour, but it benefited me uh, quite a bit. A little pasta tonight, Debbie, uh, Joe? No, I think I'm going to take my wife out to eat for once. <laughs> well, you can have pasta. <laughs> See you all later.